My name is Tom Place, this is Chasing Cars, and today we're looking at the Porsche 718 Cayman, which surely has to be one of the best two-door coupes Porsche has ever made, and outright one of the best coupes on sale today. Which makes it all the more tragic that very soon we may actually be losing this car. In 2025, a Porsche is set to release the successor for this, and it's going to be fully electric. And while the petrol version is going to exist alongside it, at least for a little bit, we really don't know how long, so its days are very much indeed numbered. In a way, the 718 is actually the last of a dying breed of the more affordable end of mid-engine sports cars, with the Lotus Exige and the Alfa Romeo 4C discontinued from sale. Of course, Lotus has released the Amira, but that's about $200,000 nowadays. And this actually starts at about a bit over $130,000, and while I'm not going to pretend that that's affordable to everyone, I do think the value stacks up. That's why today we've decided to have another look at the 718 to see how it stacks up after 10 years on sale. We've gone for the more enthusiast focused spec, which is of course the Cayman, and we've also gone for the lower end of the price tree and gone for the base two liter flat four boxer engine. But before we jump into that, please don't forget to like and subscribe and also follow us on the socials if you want to see more content like this. Chasing cars, honest reviews of your next car. Brought to you by Budget Direct. Beside me is the 718 Style Edition, which is essentially a lightly accessorized version of the base model. It starts a bit over $136,000, which is about $45,000 more than the base model itself. It's of course available in both the Cayman and the Boxer variants. We have the Cayman with us today. Now, as the name suggests, this is all about design, and we do get a few extra goodies by going for the Style Edition. There are six unique color combinations, which I really do like. We've also got this livery here, which is available in both a black or a white. Personally, I think my favorite specification has to be the boxer with the pink paint and also the white livery on the white wheels. I think that looks absolutely fantastic. There's also a few other little odds and ends. If we come down the side of the car here, we see that we've got these wheels here have been beefed up from a 19 inch wheel up to a 20 inch wheel. We've also got some black exhaust tips and other things inside, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But for the most part, this is pretty similar to the base grade. Now you might notice that the car is sitting pretty low today and that's not just because it's a Cayman. We've actually got a 10 mil drop on this one and Porsche's active suspension management setup on this one. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. As far as the brakes, we've actually got a four piston setup in the front and the rear, and the rotors measure 330 mils and 299 back there. So certainly some pretty serious kit. When I first jumped into the interior of the 718 came in, I've got to say, I was really impressed. I'm six foot tall and I have heaps of room inside this cabin. I have absolutely heaps of headroom, and I do feel really quite comfortable sitting in my natural seating position. I've got a nice little armrest here, which is wide enough for, I'm gonna say one and a half people, and I've got a nice little armrest on the other side as well. And combined with a seat, which is just really well set up as well, the driving position is absolutely just spot on. It's very easy to just immediately feel at home inside this cabin. Now, there are a few optional extras inside this cabin, I should say. There's the GT steering wheel I've got in front of me that's an extra 520 dollars but oh i really do like it such a nice size rim around here and i've also got these very very lovely paddles here for the pdk and i've also got these 18-way adjustable seats you do get 14-way adjustable seats as a standard but i do think the extra degree of adjustability is certainly very nice we've got this nice extra bit of adjustable under thigh support which really does make a difference on those long trips we've also got this carbon fiber inlay bit here this costs an extra 2300 odd dollars which is you know pretty take it or leave in my opinion, but it's certainly there if you do want to opt for it. I think the main surprise about this cabin, other than the fact I do have a good amount of space for myself, is the little bits of storage around the cabin. So for example, in the door here, we do actually have two different door bins. We've got the primary door bin, which look admittedly isn't very large, but you certainly could squeeze some stuff down by the side here. And you've got a separate bin which pops out like so, and that's on the driver and the passenger side door. We do have a place to put your phone, just under here, good amount of space there, and a USB port. We've also got a, a separate USB port in there. And the glove box here does have a good amount of space for you to stash some other gear. But look, overall, there are gonna be some compromises going for a mid-engine sports car, and storage is going to be one of them. But it seems like Porsche has done the best with what they have. Now, there are definitely some signs that the interior of the 718 is starting to get a little bit older, and of course, that starts with the multimedia system. It's a pretty small screen, and the quality really isn't there. The software behind it also looks fairly old. We do have Apple CarPlay, though, so that's very nice indeed. The buttons here, though, look, they might look a little bit old, but they certainly feel very nice to touch. And I 
I found them fairly intuitive to use when I've been going on big drives this week. We do have a separate 4.6 inch display up here just to the right of our analog gauge cluster, which I've always found to be a really nice balance in Porsches. So it's great to see that's there, and I do hope that's retained for the next generation of this car. Finally, I will say that this is fitted with the standard eight speaker stereo system. And in general, I found it to be just really okay. Though thankfully there are some more premium stereo options above this if you are interested in better audio quality. So this might be a ridiculously impractical sports car, but just how ridiculously impractical is it? Well, let's start with the front here with our first boot, fruit, I don't know, whatever you wanna call it. And we open up the hatch like so with our key by double pressing it, obviously, and a real 150 litre space. It's a good amount of space, this one, and it's also a nice rectangular shape. So you could get a fairly large item in here if you need to. But I've just got my things like my bag in here today, which fit pretty easily and among some other odds and ends. So I found that pretty good and not too limiting in my trips of the last few days. Coming around to the rear here. Now, if we just press on this section of the tailgate, opens up like so, very clever indeed. And we have our second boot, of course. And considering there's a big old engine in the way, I'm actually pretty impressed with the amount of space back here. So it's 184 up top and 272 liters down the bottom section here. And notably, Porsche's actually done a fairly good job of trying to make this space as usable as it can be, considering that honestly, you know, of course, it's not very big. And they've done that not just by having this be a pretty good rectangular shape, but also by the amount of tie down points they've got in the boot area here. So you probably can put an overnight bag up the top there and have some others down here. In total, there's eight tie down points. So that's actually eight more than a Honda CRV. So that's certainly something you can brag about to your friends. Now, running costs probably isn't gonna be your biggest concern when it comes to the 718, but I still think it's something we should take a quick look at. Now, the combined fuel consumption claim for the PDK version is seven liters per 100 Ks. I've been seeing around about 10 liters. So for the most part, I do think that's pretty good considering I've been doing a combination of some sporty driving, highway driving, and urban driving. I think notably though, the fact that I've been seeing as low as 6.4 litres per 100 Ks on the highway, combined with the fact that we have a surprisingly large fuel tank of 64 litres, means this is actually has some pretty long legs on this car, up to about 1,000 kilometres. And while the fuel consumption certainly does ramp up quite a bit once you start to step on the throttle a bit more, I do think it's pretty notable and goes towards its grand touring abilities. Now, what about warranty? Well, Porsche's standard warranty is a three-year unlimited kilometre warranty, which isn't too great, but you do have the ability to extend it out far further than that. Servicing intervals are every 12 months or 15,000 kilometers. Though if you're taking this to the track, do yourself a favor and take this to the mechanic way more often than that. So what's it like to drive the Porsche 718 Cayman? Well, this being the style edition, it is based on the base model and I certainly don't think that is a bad thing at all. This two liter might be the base engine, but it's certainly a great thing. This is a bespoke proper Porsche engine. It's a flat four and it's a fantastic unit. 220 kilowatts of power right up at 6,500 RPM, torque 380 newton meters between a bit over 2000 RPM right up to 4500 RPM. It's right where you need it and it's absolutely fantastic. The way it's able to punch out of corners is really just fantastic. Now a lot of people were quite upset when this new generation went from a six cylinder to a four cylinder engine in the base grade and I certainly do understand that especially from a theatrical perspective because while this does sound pretty good for a four cylinder it certainly isn't the best sounding engine in the world. And if you were to jump in something like a BMW M2 with its beautiful straight six, I think perhaps that would win out in terms of sound quality. Now, of course, there is a more powerful version of this engine available if you want to step up to the 2.5 litre flat four. It's a bit more powerful there. And of course, there is the flat six above it in the GTS grade. But overall, I do think this engine does suit the needs of most. And it's probably at the limit of what you're going to want from a car that you're driving on Aussie roads. If you want to do a bit more track work, perhaps the 2.5 and the four litre flat six are better options. Now, Porsche claims a zero to 100 time for this car is 4.9 seconds though in the past we've found that their uh, their estimations are usually on the conservative side they want to go out there and beat them yourself fortunately we haven't been able to independently test the braking or acceleration for this car this time around but i can assure you we've done it in many similar cars and it is astonishing so certainly nothing to worry about in that department now for our testing i really wanted to find
find out if this car was good, not just in terms of being on the dynamic edge, but also what it was like over a long distance. So this week I went out and I went for a seven hour drive right up through Putty Road and some other areas of New South Wales, which many of you will be familiar with. I thought it was a good test for the 718 because it takes you through those areas which aren't super smooth and aren't super ideal and are really what you come to expect from B roads in Australia. They're a bit rough, they're a bit coarse, but they can also be incredibly amazing when the opportunity strikes right. Now, as many people have said before me, things like steering feel in the 718 are absolutely fantastic. It's just so spot on and you can feel absolutely everything that goes through the wheels. Also, when it comes to brake pedal feel, it's just so progressive and you can get a good amount of feel for what they're doing. And also, the brake pedal punch is certainly nothing to be underestimated either. But the thing I wanna focus on is what it's like driving a vehicle such as this that does have its engine in the middle. Now, unless you're some sort of Hong Kong billionaire who's used to driving uh, supercars 24-7, uh, the rest of us mere mortals will be used to driving front engine cars, be that in front wheel drive configuration or rear wheel drive configuration. And driving a mid-rear car like this is very interesting indeed. I think what really separates mid-engine cars from other great driving front engine rear wheel drive cars out there is the fact that, you know, similar to those vehicles, you do have great turn in, but the lightness of the front end means that you just bring the car around in such a smooth manner. And oftentimes I found myself rounding a corner far quicker than I thought I was. And it was nothing to do with the rear wheels losing traction. It was the fact that the turn in is just so incredible. And that goes through the apex as well. And honestly, I think it's one of those things that really highlights a distinct difference of why the 718 is a car that a lot of people aspire to going up from other cars like the Toyota Supra and others like that, which are great driving cars in their own right, but just having that engine in the middle is just so right in so many different dynamic conditions. Now, of course, good dynamic ability is to be expected from the 718, but what is it like to drive over those long distances? And to me, this separates the good sports cars from the great. Things that you don't hesitate to go and drive when you wanna go on a fun B road with your mates over the weekend. You don't just have a parked in the back of your garage for when you want to do a track day. And I do think the Cayman excels fairly well here. Now, when I went and embarked out on my long journey, I was initially thinking, oh my gosh, what have I done? This is really quite rough riding and I'm not sure if I can tolerate this for another five to six hours. But over the hours started to wear on, I did find myself settling in. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I did find myself being a little bit fatigued over the journey. And that comes from the fact that yes, we do have sports seats. There's a little bit of uh, comfort build into them, but they're not super amazing. But also the fact we've stepped up from 19 inch wheels on the base to 20 inch wheels on this style edition. Personally, I would opt for the 19 inch wheels just to give us that extra degree of compliance and forgivability when you hit those unexpected potholes. Now, one thing that did start to wear on me after many hours of the wheel was the road noise. And this is a little bit to be expected, I think. This is how Porsche gets this car to be just over 1300 kilos. They don't do it by stuffing it full of excess sound dead and personally, I do think it is worth the trade-off, but if you're looking for a long distance Grand Tourer, perhaps there are some other options out there that might be a little bit more suitable to have a little bit more luxury in its focus. I will also note that there was a slight plastic squeaking noise coming back from somewhere in the rear of the car, which is a little bit disappointing, though I haven't been able to hear it all the time. It's only really on those super rough roads. Now lastly, let's just touch on safety really quickly. Of course, we have a full suite of airbags, so you know, physical impacts should be reasonably okay. And we've also got things like front parking sensors and rear parking sensors. I will say though, I was a bit disappointed we didn't have a front camera, just because this is a very low car and I want to be sure of exactly how close I was getting to parking bollards because this certainly wouldn't clear a lot of them and the reversing camera I do think is a little bit grainy those sorts of things do start to come with the age of this vehicle and I'm sure we'll see an improvement in the next generation now while we do have some basic driver aids like blind spot monitoring we are lacking things like lane keep assist which for many people I'm sure will be a good thing especially considering those things are turned on by default on many cars today when it comes to buying an older model in its twilight years, it's pretty easy to have some conflicting feelings come into play, and I certainly do feel that way about the 718. Do you bide your time and wait for the new generation model, which very well could set some new benchmarks when it comes to driving dynamics and certainly electrification in sports cars? Or do you go with the current generation, which has had so many years to iron out all its kinks and prove itself time after time? 
Personally, I can see the merits of both, but there's certainly no getting away from the age of the current generation 718. It's cabin tech and safety is starting to get a little bit dated, though for some, that may actually be a good thing. There's also no getting away from just how expensive this model is. Yes, it might be pretty good value for the model, and I do indeed think it is. It starts over $130,000, but you are going to be tacking on options. That's just part and parcel of buying a Porsche in 2024. This one here, fully specified as it is, is over 160, for example. If you're in the market, I would encourage you to go check out the BMW M2. That's an absolutely fantastic coupe, and it is a little bit cheaper than the base price of the 718. But personally, after my week of driving, this car I've just been so impressed it's such a phenomenal vehicle even all these years later and if I was looking for a sports car that I could hang on to for many years to remember just how good these things were back in their heyday before the world all went fully electric this would be high on my list but look those have just been my thoughts and I'm really keen to hear yours down in the comments section below do you own a 718 and if you were looking in this segment which one would you go for Boxster or Cayman let me know in those comments down below don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more content like this but for now, that's all. Thank you for watching Chasing Cars.